So what is going on everybody, my name is Mehul and welcome back to this video in which we'll be seeing what is NPM versioning and node versioning uh, essentially and why would you ever need that. So the idea with node versioning is to have multiple versions of node on your systems, right? It is pretty much like you can think of it like Python versioning if you are coming from a Python environment. You see that you have virtual environments in Python if you are able to relate. So what virtual environment in Python is loosely mapped to what versioning is in Node. So the idea is that you can have multiple installations, multiple different versions of Node on your system and you can switch between them easily without actually causing uh, you know, a chaos to your system. So you can have pretty much like node 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 installed on your system simultaneously and uh, you know you can just work with any one of them if you like. Now why would you need that thing in the first place? Well first things first, for example if you are working with a legacy code base which allows, which probably runs on node 6 although you should have updated it by now but I'm just considering some edge case which, which has some humongous sort of I don't know, some code with, written in Node which uses Node 6 and it's not compatible with the upward versions. You should stay with Node, you should stay running Node 6 on that system only. Now, if you use to code for that system on your primary device, you want to have Node 6 written here, right? Not Node 10 because, you know, that's what your project works with. So you might want to have node 6 for some legacy projects and you might want to work with just, you know, node 12, 13, 14 for your regular projects, right? Because they come with a lot of new features, a lot of performance optimizations, why not? So that is one reason, right? The another reason for this is could be like um, a lot of times what happens is when we install packages using NPM, they are not just JavaScript packages, right? they are um they could be they could be system binaries as well which have to be compiled using node zip right so it's gy node dash gyp i might pronounce it wrong because i've never heard it how to pronounce it but anyway the idea is that you can have actual binaries that is actual um code which is compiled right with as node packages so as part of node packages for example so the idea is that if you have a node binary which is compiled with node version 6 or 7 or 8, it might break or it might not work at all with node versions 9, 10, 11, 12, for example. So for that project, you need to be using node 8 only. If that binary does not support a node version greater than 10, you can just work on that um, with a node version greater than 10. So um that is number two the number three reason i can think of is just for fun right so there's a experimental release for node and you want to try it out without breaking a lot of things um one way is to like you know install it as a version um on your main system although you can always go ahead and use docker containers for that but we won't get it we won't be getting into that but yeah, the idea is that uh, you can go ahead and install the highest node version, play it around a little, then downgrade as you like without, you know, all from the terminal. You don't have to touch anything at all um, as code. So yeah, those are my three reasons why you would want versioning with node. In the next video, we'll see how you can do versioning with node and uh, how that works. So that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video really quick.